Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 20 of the AI series where we're talking about weighted random enemy spawning. What that means is we're going to have some enemies that will have a higher likelihood of spawning than others while still keeping a random spawn order so we can't predict which enemy will spawn next. But we can say that this particular enemy has a much higher chance of spawning next. I implement this in Mama Survival where the basic enemy starts and that's the only enemy you can see so that's the one that you get and as I start adding more different enemy types those have a higher weight because they're more challenging than the basic enemy but we still want that basic enemy to spawn just not as many of them. I did the exact same thing with the bosses where on one particular level this boss has a significantly higher weight so they're much more likely to spawn than of any other boss but on that level any boss can spawn and same on a different level, a different boss is more heavily weighted, so they're more likely to spawn there. It's like their home base where that boss originated from. I think this is a really great tool that you can implement in your game to diversify your player's gameplay experience. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash llamacademy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. We'll open up our sample scene, the one that we use the most in the AI series. And you'll notice it looks a little bit different. I changed the skybox to give me this kind of orangey gradient to make it feel more dark. The first thing we'll do is in the project panel, create a new script called a weighted spawn scriptable object. We'll open up Visual Studio and make the weighted spawn scriptable object extend the scriptable object class. We'll also add a create asset menu attribute with a file name of weighted spawn config and the menu name of the scriptable object slash weighted spawn config. In here, we'll add a public enemy scriptable object enemy, and that'll be the reference to the enemy. We're doing it this way so we decouple the enemy from the spawn config. So depending on different even rounds or different levels in your game, different scenes, you could have different weighted spawn configs for the same enemy. And the enemy doesn't need to know about how it should spawn. That's really the responsibility of the enemy spawner, and that's why we're separating this out from the enemy. We'll also add a public float min weight, and I'll attach the range attribute, limiting it to 0 to 1 in the inspection vector because this is going to be a percentage. We're going to use this with the random.value which returns a random number between 0 and 1 and we're going to use that to control whether we should spawn this enemy or the next enemy. Much like the random enemy spawn that we did when we first started implementing the enemy spawn or random spawning. And we'll also add a public float max weight with the range attribute also of 0 to 1. I'll then add a public float get weight and it's going to be a function that returns a random range between the min and max weight. And I'll get into why we do it this way when we hit the enemy spawner which is where we're going next. We'll open up the enemy spawner and at the top we have a list of enemies. We're actually going to change that to be a list of weighted spawn scriptable objects and we're going to rename it to be weighted enemies. And we're changing the name of this because we're using the weighted spawn scriptable object now but even if we're using the round robin or the random spawn we can have a weighted spawn scriptable object that references our enemy it'll just ignore the min max weight properties there and spawn excluding those but adding this in gives us that additional functionality of being able to have weighted spawned enemies and under the section we have red at runtime that we did a couple videos ago we're going to add a new private float array called weights and we're going to serialize that field so we can view it in the inspector we're never going to actually modify that or set it up in the inspector ourselves we'll then scroll down to the awake function and in there we will initialize the weights to be a new float array of size weighted enemies dot count this way we're sure weights array is the same size as our weighted enemies list. And you'll notice that there's some red here because we're referencing the enemies.prefab for example. But now since we're using the weighted enemies index by i, we need to reference the dot enemy property of there to reference the enemy scriptable object that's in the weighted enemy spawn config. And there's one of these in the awake where we're creating the object pool. There's one in start where we're creating the scaled enemies scriptable objects. And then there's one in the spawn enemies coroutine where we're actually doing the enemy scale up. We'll then go down to the bottom where we have the spawn method enumeration and we'll add in the weighted random value here. Let's we'll scroll up some and create a private void reset spawn weights. 
This is important because we don't trust ourselves to do math and there's a small or potentially large amount of randomness that can be applied in our weighted spawn configs. And those may not always add up to be exactly one. Actually, because they're random, they most likely will never add up to be exactly one. So what we need to do in this function is normalize the weights, meaning if we sum up the entire array of weights, the float weights that we have here, that should equal one. And I'll show that in the inspector a little bit later in the video. What we're going to do here is define a float total weight and set that to be zero by default. We'll then loop over all the weighted enemies. So for int i equals zero, i less than weighted enemies dot count, incrementing i by one. We will assign weights indexed by i to equal weighted enemies indexed by i dot get weight. Remember that returns us a random number between the min and max weight. We'll then add whatever that value was to the total weight. So we'll do total weight plus equals weights indexed by i. Now that we have the total weight, what we're going to do is go another loop through the weights, so for int i equals zero, i less than weights dot length, i plus plus, we'll assign weights indexed by i to be weights indexed by i divided by total weight. Then we have a normalized value for each weight, regardless of what number we put in here, the total of all of these should equal one. In the spawn enemy coroutine, right before we start spawning, we will call this function to reset the spawn weights, so that way we're sure that every time we're gonna spawn enemies, we've generated new random weights and they've been normalized. Then while we're spawning enemies in this while loop, we'll add the extra condition if the enemy spawn method is spawn method dot weighted random, we will spawn weighted random enemy. Then we'll scroll down and define that function, private void spawn weighted random enemy. And what we'll do here is do float value equals random dot value. Then we will iterate over the weights. So for int i equals zero, i less than weights dot length, incrementing i by one. We'll check if the value is less than weights indexed by i, then we will do spawn enemy with this index, choosing a random spawn point on nav mesh, and then we'll return. And in case we did not hit that, we will subtract this current weight from the value. And what that means is whatever value we pick is going to land us on a different enemy. So let's take the example where random.value gives us 0.5. If we say that our, let's just keep it easy, our first enemy is 0.1 chance of spawning. 0.1 is less than 0.5, so we'll skip that. Then we'll subtract 0.1 from 0.5, giving us 0.4 as a new value to test against. Then we'll check, hey, is the second enemy, do they have less than a 40% chance to spawn? But let's say that they have like a 20% chance. So we're at 0.2 on this one. We'll say value is 0.4. That's greater than 0.2, so we'll skip this. We'll subtract 0.2 from 0.4, giving us 0.2. And then let's say that the third one, that one has 21% chance, so it's 0.21. Then we hit this, we'll say do spawn enemy with index of two, and we'll pass in the random position there. That's how we can guarantee that we'll spawn an enemy and they all have approximately the correct chance of spawning. And here at the bottom, I'll do a debug.log error saying that you did an invalid configuration. With the code that we've written here, you'll never hit this error, but maybe you modify the script some, leaving this error message so that way you get kind of a notification that, hey, you messed up the configuration. Maybe you forgot to call reset spawn weights just to be safe. There's one last change we need to make. We need to open up the enemy burst spawn area because in here we reference the enemy spawner.enemies and we've renamed that to be enemy spawner weighted enemies. Inside this delegate function, we need to make sure that we're referencing enemy.enemy .enemy because remember the dot enemy is the enemy scriptable object and we're comparing to an enemy scriptable object in this class. Then if we hop back to the Unity editor, I'll right click create new folder and I'll name it spawn configs. In here, we'll create a new weighted spawn scriptable object for each enemy type. That'll be basic enemy, tall enemy, ranged enemy, homing enemy, and flying enemy. For the basic enemy, I'll set up the enemy to have the basic enemy scriptable object and set the min weight to 0.1 and max weight to 0.15. For the tall enemy, I'll set up the tall enemy enemy scriptable object, the min weight to be 0.1 and max weight to be 0.15. For the ranged enemy, I'll also hook up the ranged enemy scriptable object, set the min weight this time to 0.2 and max weight to 0.25, so it has twice as likely approximately chance to spawn a ranged enemy more than the basic or tall enemy. For the homing enemy, we'll do the exact same thing. And for the flying enemy, we'll hook up the flying enemy scriptable object. And I'm going to make this one be a lot more likely. I'll set the min weight to be 0.5 and the max weight to be 0.75. So this will be significantly more likely to spawn a flying enemy than any other enemy. If we select the enemy manager, we'll see that the enemy spawner lost all of the references to the enemies because we renamed the field and changed the type. So it doesn't know what to reference here anymore. So I'll set it to be at size of five and hook up our basic tall 
ranged, homing, and flying enemy weighted spawn areas here. And I'll change the enemy spawn method to be weighted random, since that's what we're trying to look at in this video. I'm also going to increase the number of enemies to spawn to be 25, so we can kind of see the variance of what's going to spawn. Something if we just use like five enemies, it, it's not really clear what will spawn. I'll split my main view, so I have the game on top, scene view on bottom, so we can see all the enemies spawning. And then I'll click play. And before we start watching the enemy spawn, let me click pause real fast, and we can take a look at the weights. We'll see for the basic enemy, we have 0.088 something, so about eight, almost 9% chance to spawn a basic enemy. We have a little over 9% chance to spawn a tall enemy. We have about a 16%, a little bit under, to spawn a ranged enemy, about an 18% chance to spawn a homing ranged enemy, and a 48% chance to spawn a flying enemy. If I bring up the calculator and just sum these values through like the third decimal point, we'll see it ends up being 0 0.998, which is what we expected. We expect it to be just about one. Since I didn't do the full numbers, it didn't end up being exactly one, but it's close enough, right? We then watch all these enemies spawn. We'll see that there are significantly more flying enemies than any other type. I see something like maybe eight or nine flying enemies, only a couple basic, a couple ranged, and maybe one tall right now. But as soon as I walk through this burst spawn area, we'll see that that doesn't include the weighted random, right? Because we didn't adjust the burst spawn to random spawn, we kept it at the only spawning two enemy types, the tall and the ranged from, from before. So at the end, we'd see that there's a more normal mix of enemies because we spawned a significant number of tall and ranged enemies that kind of help balance it out. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to implement weighted random spawning into your game to help diversify your player's gameplay experience. If you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday and sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI and weighted enemy spawning into your game, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.